seven years since 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was killed in his Sanford neighborhood. His death sparked a nationwide movement organized to shed light on the discrimination that African Americans have endured. ABC Action News in-depth reporter Anthony Hill spoke with two members of the Black Lives Matter organization to take a closer look at the progress made and how far there is to go. The death of Trayvon Martin is widely considered to be the beginning of the hashtag Black Lives Matter. It would eventually turn into a movement formed in response to the acquittal of George Zimmerman, the man who killed Trayvon 10 years ago. Thousands seeking justice in the shooting of an unarmed teen are getting ready to rally for Trayvon Martin in Sanford. Most black people know what it's like to be harassed, uh, to be um, followed, to be harmed by ill-intending people. Donna Davis is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Tampa. With the 10-year remembrance of the death of Trayvon Martin, she reflects on how she felt when she found out an unarmed black teenager was shot and killed. It was very hurtful to know that a young man, someone insinuated themselves into the perfectly legal activities of a black, young black man going about his business, which resulted in his death. On the night of February 26, 2012, there was a conflict between Trayvon Martin, who was walking back home after getting snacks for himself and his younger brother, and George Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch volunteer. The conflict ended in Trayvon being shot and killed by Zimmerman. Zimmerman says he was defending himself, while others question why he was following a minor who lived in that community in the first place. <laughs> Oh, they always get away. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Zimmerman was acquitted based on Florida's 2005 standard ground law. This is about the will of the people. Yes. It's about what we're called into, what our sacred duty is when we say names like Trayvon Martin. Dr. Melina Abdullah is the director of Black Lives Matter Grassroots, and she says what happened to Trayvon has happened to other black children. We can think about people like Emmett Till. We can think about 13-year-old Devin Brown, who was killed in Los Angeles um, a few years before Trayvon. Black Lives Matter has been mobilizing and protesting for the better part of a decade. I think the part that people miss about when they're analyzing racism and how far we have to go is where we came from and why. We have to know how we got here in order to know how we're going to get out of it. I think there's tangible wins. Like we just witnessed convictions, which we've never seen before. She's referring to the three men who were convicted of killing Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia and the police officer that shot and killed Dante Wright in Minnesota. As for the future of the Black Lives Matter movement, there are some tangible things that we intend to win. She says they plan on fighting to end qualified immunity which is the controversial legal doctrine that protects police officers accused of misconduct. No knock warrants, which allows law enforcement to storm someone's home without warning. And reimagining public safety by investing more into mental health resources, education, and improving the quality of life of black people. And so that's where we're moving is Black Lives Matter. I think that the discourse that's been opened up, the awareness that people have, has set the stage for a new generation. In Tampa, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.